would you like to learn from those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level? Best-selling author of Speak Easy and Master Connector Lou Diamond is here to connect you to some of the most inspiring and amazing people on this planet. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another spectacular episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Today on Thrive Loud, we have two longtime friends. One is a business coach creating emotionally intelligent workspaces and communities. The other is a mindfulness and emotional intelligence coach and a meditation and breathing teacher. Brought together even closer by losses in their lives, the two created a podcast program that you are going to have to add to your playlist. Thrive Out listeners, I am very proud to bring you Tracy Fink and Joy Sullivan, the hosts of Our Dead Mothers. Joy and Tracy, welcome to Thrive Loud. Thanks. Happy to be here, Lou. Excited Thanks, to s- excited to see the two of you. Uh, listeners are going, our dead mothers say what? Uh, I love to do a little rewind here. Um, I'm going to take myself out of the, the conversation. I want to understand how this idea, this program, this podcast came to be. And I'll start off with you, Joy, so that you can give us a, a background as what happened and how we got here. Sure. So Tracy and I were having one of our weekly chats, uh, helping each other uh, through this life. And I noticed this pattern where we were taking kind of teachings and lessons learned um, and ways in which we were not um, doing exactly what our mothers had done and kind of incorporating them into our lives. And at one point, I said something about um, something that I remembered that my mother would say. And then I said, our dead mothers. And Tracy said, oh my God, that's a great idea for a podcast. There's, there's so much that they're still teaching us. So Tracy, um, podcasting, is this something, have you been an active podcast listener throughout your days, is that like an important part of what you do? Is that, a, is that, are you, are you, are you a listener? Cause uh, by the way, a lot of people don't know that this is, you know, a thing until they start getting into it. Were you always a podcast listener? I've always been a podcast listener. Um, but I also provided content when I was, um, isolated during the pandemic, I created this, um, weekly, uh, video series called Wednesday Wisdom, where I was sharing some of the mindfulness, emotional intelligence learnings that I had, because I feel like it is really no good for me to keep it to myself. And I found that there was a real audience for these little tidbits of wisdom, of humanity, of um, common challenges. And so I, I thought a podcast was something I had always kind of tinkered with and toyed with. But I didn't have the right hook. And then when Joy and I started talking and realized that there could be something here, it was really exciting. And as listeners will hear, I mean, Joy has a lot of this wisdom and um, yeah, just content that lives inside her, even though she had was never one to, had, to put it out before in this way. Let's get a little background here. Um, Tracy, when did your mother pass away? My mother passed away uh, December 2022. She um, was not well, but we did not expect her to die at that time. It was pretty, it was like a sudden, it wasn't like we were standing vigil over her death. We got a call that she had died. And Joy? Uh, My mother uh, died last September, almost a year ago. Um, my mother was, uh, suffering from Alzheimer's disease and, um, we're not exactly sure what caused her to die. Um, 
but um, yeah, almost a year ago. Uh, let's talk about, before we talk about their passings, let's rewind and understand what it was like when they were around. I'm going to start with, with you, Joy. Uh, share with the listeners the relationship that you had with your mother when she was alive. You know, I think um, relationships with your mothers go in stages. Um, I'm the youngest of four girls, so I would say I was the challenging child um, for kind of a long time. Um, and then I moved to New York um, and uh, was a prosecutor actually in the Manhattan DA's office and got and had children. And then the relationship with my mother as I matured. Um, became one of much more mutual respect. Um, my mother was a wonderful mother, um, loving, caring, devoted to her children, um, also had really long-term friendships, um, had a really wonderful marriage with my father, um, was a great role model. Um, and as I got older, um, I think the relationship just deepened as I really began to appreciate even more um, who my mother was. And um, my dad died when my mom was 60. And the way that she um, moved through that um, with such grace and moved forward was also quite inspiring. Um, in many ways, that was more traumatic. I felt like in my experience losing my dad than for my mom losing her partner. Um, and then, um, my mother, unfortunately, um, uh, Alzheimer's disease. And I was actually at that time working as an attorney in the field of elder justice. So was spending a lot of time uh, with older adults, many of whom um, had Alzheimer's disease. And then she came to live in the place where I was working. Uh, that was challenging. That was during COVID. Um, and honestly, it was a relief um, that my mom died. I know she didn't want to live like that. And um, she died surrounded by her four daughters, which was pretty an amazing experience. Um, she had a really good death, I would say. Um, and the relationship continues on. I mean, that's what this podcast is about in so many ways that um, she died, but our relationship keeps going. Yeah. Tracy, I'm going to ask the same question to you, your relationship with your mom in her living. Yeah. Year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not that question. Um, <laughs> hence the podcast. Yeah. Um, so I had a very different relationship with my mother than Joy did. My parents got divorced when I was very young and uh, there was just, I, I don't even know the exact words to even chronicle the, the, the way things happened. But um, as an adult, I think that um, my mother and I got to understand each other a little bit differently. The mindfulness practice, the mindfulness teaching was something that really allowed me to forgive my mother because I forgave myself for not, you know, being all that uh, to my mother. And then I was able to obviously for, to forgive her. And I think that um, I had changed uh, through the practice. And then my mother changed because I was looking uh, at her differently. And I think that was such a, a gift. Um, one thing that we did connect on is this, uh, the teaching that I was doing in the mindfulness world. She loved that. She was really interested in it. She was really fascinated by it. I had done these videos as Wednesday Wisdom and, and she was my biggest fan and she loved talking about them and she loved um, unpacking it with me. And if I missed a week, she was right on it. You know, where were you? Hmm. Um, so I also think that in her death and also with the help of uh, this podcast and with dear friends and, you know, <clears throat> my family, my husband, I have a, I, I still have a relationship with my mother that is probably 
stronger and more positive and maybe even more true than it was when she was alive. And that is really comforting and very helpful. So it's such a unique thing, right? Because we all have mothers and at some point in life, we all, we lose them and we have relationships with us and with them throughout our lives and to the point of this podcast beyond their lives and the effect they have. So um, let's give a little like sprinkle if you would to help the listeners understand okay so what's going on on the our dead mothers podcast what what should we expect as a listener um i'll start off with you joy give tell us a little bit about like how these shows are working and what what you're talking about so we we break them down into themes um that feel alive um food uh guilt uh, anxiety and worry um, love, friendship. So these things that feel really real and resonant for us in our lives right now, parenting, mothering. Um, and we weave in what some of the lessons were that we learned from our mothers. What are some of the ways in which we've kind of integrated and metabolized those lessons for ourselves now as individuals? And what are some of the ways that those lessons have this universal appeal so that um, we can share them with other people as a way to, I think, help people grow and reduce their own suffering and pain because the relationships with your mother is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, uh, the structure of the show is unique into and of itself. You wanna like give a little bit of a a flow of what people can get from beginning to end because this is not like your typical podcast. No, this is this is not your mother's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we usually begin an episode with a meditation practice because we are both in that world and we also know the strength and power that <clears throat> meditation has had helping us deal with these challenging situations. So we are trying to impart just some very small tools, easy tools for our listeners to have in their toolkit so that they can utilize them when, when things get tough. So the idea is to practice when things are pleasant or, or boring, as we say. So we usually start with a meditation. We um, have a little banter. I mean, Joy and I have been friends for 40 years, and I think that that comes out. There's a safety in having these difficult conversations. There's a trust. There's a um, uh, there's a recognition of, of, of something that should be said more, like say more or, um, you know, having um, one of us um, help the other to maybe get to that aha moment just because we know the other the other style. And then we usually close with a poem because we both love poetry. And I think that um, poetry, poetry uh, invokes feelings that, you know, maybe just saying something um, doesn't. So that's been really great and beautiful. Um, I think that's... That's, and and I, I know we just try, as Joy mentioned, we really try to humanize and normalize a lot of the um, experiences that we're having or that we have had with our mothers. It's a, it is, it's a complicated relationship and, you know, many people feel alone in their thoughts of, of you know, this complication or this, you know, idea that it should be one way, but it's really not. And I'm the only one who is this way. And, you know, I am I'm a terrible person and it doesn't have to be that way. So we really are hoping to let people know it's, it's all good, you know, in that world. Uh, Joy, you used an analogy once in, in a description that uh, because this is not just about a past tense thing of what our mothers used to be. There is an activeness to our dead mothers today and, and their effect in our lives. You used an analogy that had to deal with certain uh, fruits. Can you share, share with the listeners um, the presence of our dead mothers and what it means to you each day? It's a discussion that the two of you have amongst one another, between one another. I don't know. You're going to have to remind me. It had Sorry. to do with a fruit. It was, is, is your relationship with your mother, as you remember it this week, is it more like a oh. juicy watermelon or a unripe peach? 
Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so you know, I'm I'm a big metaphor lover, um, particularly around nature. Um, and I mean, what's so interesting is the way that things are constantly changing. And um, so that question about what is the relationship with your dead mother like? Um, I mean, my mother is dead, right? She's like, it, it is within me that the relationship, the feeling of the relationship, the feeling tone of the relationship is able to shift and change. And it's through my own experience um, that I can kind of learn these things. And then in my actions as a, as a mother to my own children, um, be a little bit more deliberate about um, how, how I am to them. I think there's something really fascinating. If, if for the listeners who can you can rewind, then you heard the descriptions of how I of what they do in their what Tracy and Joy do in their real lives. One is creating emotionally intelligent workplaces and communities, and one is all about mindfulness and emotional intelligence. And mindfulness is something that you are both very much. It's part of who you are, and it's a lot of the work that you do. And I think it's it's wonderful that you've paired that into this very meaningful topic. Um, in helping so many people, because for the record, as as we get older and we get to this stage of our lives, when we we lose a parent and specifically our mothers who we have such a close bit to having an appreciation and understanding of it is, is a wonderful gift you are giving to the listeners who can tune into this, which we should give gratitude for, which is I know recently one of your episodes had a, a hint of the importance of gratitude. Um, I, I want to shift it this way in create. I say this to all the people that create great contents, authors, podcasters. When you create great content, you give a gift to the world. But there's this happy accident and a gift that you get in return. What has the our dead mothers given both of you the happy accident and a gift to each of you individually? Uh, Tracy, I'll, I'll start with you. This podcast has really exceeded a lot of my expectations of uh, of, of what it could be. I think primarily for me, it has really changed my relationship with my mother. And I think I might have said early on in the uh, recording that my intention was to, you know, present the highest and best good for my mother, which is wasn't always how I led with a description or conversation with her. And so that practice of of thinking, of um, you know, giving her the benefit of the doubt, if you will, or understanding more her perspective or her position or the limitations that she had or the societal pressures that she had, I, I, I see her differently and I see myself differently. And I think that is, that is the gift that, I mean, that really keeps on giving. Um, and also, I mean, this relationship that Joy and I have had, we've been friends for a really long time and we've gone deep for a really long time. And this just feels a little fun and funny and hopeful and, you know, joyful. And it's, it's fun. It's great. Joy, same question. Well, I, I want to just say one thing about mindfulness, which is, um, there's two wings. If you consider mindfulness a bird, there's two wings of the bird. And one is this noticing that, you know, you've been hearing us talk about notice what things feel like or, you know, to bring things into awareness. But the other wing of the bird and the only way the bird flies is compassion. And so we notice things in our experience, whatever they are, thoughts, feelings, our bodies, we notice them and then we hold them in a place that's compassionate, every single thing in a place that's compassionate. So for me, this, com this podcast has helped me um, in many ways become more compassionate, compassionate about um, some of my fears, um, to be more compassionate about um, my mother, she wasn't perfect. She was great, but definitely not perfect. And our relationship certainly wasn't. Or ways in which I treated her that I think, oh no. And 
um, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to do this with Tracy is because I think I've said this, Tracy's willing to say things, put things out there. And she's, to me, she's so brave. And so I'm compassionate to my own not bravery. And then she helps me be brave. And then, you know, that's cool. So I also think it's, I'm surprised at how fun it is because I'm a pretty serious person. So when fun and shows up, I'm like, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, listeners will get a chance. They, they not only have a fun way of uh, communicating with each other about a topic you wouldn't necessarily think would be fun. But if you listen to the opening, it's it's about all the things that have to do with it. It's, it's rejoicing. It's remembering. It's it's regretting it, it. It's packaging all of the things of what your relationship is and was and could be, uh, which I think is really cool um, on a topic that is interesting. But uh, I'll go to Tracy before we, we go to the, the admin part of the show. Uh, Tracy, talk about how these episodes are titled uh, because because they are they're, they're kind of cutesy in a, in a fun way. And I guess reflecting that you want to just share a few of them or maybe just get because obviously where it's early on in the program, but everyone can get kind of an idea of where they are. Yeah, I mean, I, we're trying to have fun with this. Obviously, we want people to listen. Um, we're trying not to take ourselves so seriously. But we also, you know, want to convey a gist of something. So I think our first episode is wishing our mother's dead, which is kind of like a play on two parts could possibly be, you know, I, there are times that we probably have all wished our mother's dead for different reasons. Maybe not. I'm sorry if, if I'm offending some of you. But also just what Joy was saying in terms of compassion, you know, as our parents age, we want them to die so that they are, their, suffer, their, their suffering is alleviated, And that is a really, really big part of compassion and, and aging. Yeah. So just know that when you see the titles, it might not always be what you think. I like it. Let's do the admin part of the show. Um, share with the listeners where everybody can find either one of you. We'll go back and forth where we can find um, each of you on social and where we can uh, get our dead mothers. Tracy, I'll start with you on that just to start kick the ball rolling. Where can we find you? Links, socials, everything. We'll put it in the show notes. But give us Yeah, so I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I, I think it's Tracy L. Fink and LinkedIn as well. And I have a company called the Tortoise Institute, where we teach mindfulness-based emotional intelligence in the workplace. And that's the tortoiseinstitute.com. And Joy. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn and Instagram. And um, you can also find me on my website on Mindfulness with Joy. This is where my name ended up being so great. Um, mindfulnesswithjoy.com. Yeah. Okay. And listeners, uh, you can find Our Dead Mothers wherever you get your podcast. It is on every network, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. It's everywhere. So go check it out. Go go subscribe, follow, check it out. Okay. We're going to have a very fun version of Fun Street, one that I have never done before. So this will be a first. Um, typically, I know uh, Tracy's been on the show a long time ago. And we've changed the format even since she was on there. Joy, here's how this works. We, um, I'm going to ask certain questions here. All of these things, we call this the speakeasy pub crawl. These are like... We're going down Fun Street and we're stopping off at all these cool places that mean a lot, not only to you, but in this specific case, what they meant to your dead mothers. So with that, I'm going to start off uh, with you. Joy, did your mom have an all-time favorite movie? Oh, gosh. Um, and if you don't remember, it's okay. She, she, loved, she loved romance movies. But what I will say, and I want to give a little humor here, is when my mother was having, was, you know, and Alzheimer's disease, um, and she kept rereading um, Fifty Shades of Grey over, <laughs> and over, like a certain part, and she would forget that she read it, and we just, and it was like, what a beautiful thing that my mother could continue to read Fifty Shades of Grey and forget, but that that was really bringing, bringing her joy, so yeah. Br brings so many questions to mind. Was she really forgetting or did she really just want to read it over and over? <laughs> uh, Tracy, same question to you. Your, your mom's, your dead mom's favorite movie. Oh, she loved An Affair to Remember with um, Deborah Kerr and Cary Grant. And even now when it's on, I can't not watch it. Gotcha. Okay. Tracy, your mom's favorite food that was not a dessert. 
Where to begin? Um, <laughs> what did she like? <laughs> I mean, this is weird. I mean, she she loved cottage cheese. Was it her favorite food? I don't know. She was very brand loyal to her friendship cottage cheese. Um, she really didn't like spice. And, you know, towards the end of her life, I would come and cook for her. And it was that was very um, that was a real uh, shift in roles because she was always the cook. She was always the person who fed. And so she let me cook for her and I had to really um, um, you know, know my audience because I do cook spicy foods and things like that. So, um, but she loved pasta and, um, I don't know, I'm sure my siblings could uh, answer that as well, but she loved, uh, Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Joy, what, uh, favorite food that's not a dessert for your dead mom. Well, my mother loved lamb chops and macadamia nuts. And Ooh. yeah. Gotcha. Joy, what was her favorite dessert? Um, she loved cookies. Um, she loved she loved ice cream. Really give her anything sweet. She wasn't a big chocolate fan, but she did love dessert. Gotcha. Mm. Tr Tracy, your mom's favorite dessert. Mm. Um, I know she liked cheesecake and ice cream. Um, she liked these little... Uh, Apple things from Trader Joe's. She loved Trader Joe's. Just putting it out there. Big plug to Trader Joe's. So <laughs> anything Trader Joe's. We're, we're letting them know they could be a sponsor anytime soon. Okay. Yes, please. Tracy, um, an activity that your mother loved doing the most. Uh, we, it, well, we played cards. Um, she was not a physical activity person at all, but, um, we did, she loved Mahjong and, and we, together we played cards and we played Scrabble and she did, she loved to, she loved to beat you. <laughs> Joy, uh, an activity that your mom loved to do. Yeah, reading, crossword puzzles, Scrabble. My mother had a favorite word, avuncular, and um, she loved reading the New York Times. Anything word my mother loved and her Joy. grandchildren and children. Oh, Joy, yeah. And I, yeah, we, we assumed that was a, a given, right? Joy, an activity that your dead mother hated doing, the least favorite activity. Physical, anything physical. Do not make me move my body or sweat or no muscle, please. <laughs> Tracy. Uh, don't make me talk about my feelings. Don't <laughs> make me talk about anything that I might have done that might have offended anybody or might have gotten wrong, I am, I'm not going to apologize or discuss it. Tracy, if, uh, if she was back on this planet and you got to snap your fingers and she could choose to be anywhere in the world, what was her favorite place to be, your mom? Oh, well, she always wanted to go to Greece and she never went, but she had like these Grecian fantasy. So I would hope that she would get there and I hope that she has gotten there. And Joy. The beach. My mother loved the beach. Our dead mothers, the host, Tracy Fink, Joy Solomon. Truly a pleasure to have you on the program. Everybody go check it out. Subscribe. Our Dead Mothers podcast. Get it wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, hey, I think you guys are doing something so different and edgy that I think there's a lot more there there. Can't wait to see what comes and I'll keep listening to more episodes. And thank you both for being here on Thrive Live. Thanks, Lou. It was great. To all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. Until next time, keep moving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Lab with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thrivelab.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening.